Hey folks, it's Kerry Oberbrunner, and I have a very special guest today. In fact, uh, Tyler Wagner. How you doing, my friend? Very good, man. Grateful to be here. Oh man, so uh, you. Anytime I chat with you, you blow my mind. You changed my life, and uh, you know that happened a couple marches ago. But we are talking today about something special called the Infinite Partnership System. And this this literally changed your business and it's changed our business. So why don't you talk a little bit about why um, referrals and marketing has shifted and why this is so superior? What, what do you think? Yeah, so I think, well, I think there's a lot of reasons referrals are superior and focusing on them is of the utmost importance because it's something that never ends it is done correctly meaning like it's essentially ips infinite partnership system boiled down is discovering your best referral partnerships and then once you've discovered it then scaling it mm -hmm. and i think what a lot of people do is they're very focused on you know all the others a million types of marketing right that it's endless but uh, the thing with Facebook ads, right? I think uh, actually on one of our sales pages, you talk about this, like Facebook ads, they can take away your account tomorrow. Or if you stop spending money, then people stop seeing your ad. So there's always like, regardless, it ends in some fashion. So we just focused on partnerships. And this is like us talking right now is actually in a direct example of it. You know, how much business have me and you done to get like at least six yeah. maybe close to seven figure like around that range and that's just one partnership right so right. um i think people need to be focusing on it more and it, right. it and it pays dividends if you it's just building relationships at scale but strategically as well so. well and and i'm with you man because you and i were chatting before we started what's going on right now with us is um facebook page got hacked you know and yes. And for some people that bet all their business on that lead generation, they're now screwed. They're in jeopardy. But for us, because we have your the system that you showed us, um, we are not in danger. I'm not even worried. Mm -hmm. um, I get it. I hired a cybersecurity dude. He's figuring it out. But like, I would be freaking out right now, literally – if I didn't have IPS. So what is, what is IPS? And I know we have Tanisha watching and Michelle, and we have uh, people from Montreal joining in and this thing's going to be shown all over the place soon. But what is, what is IPS? When did you start it? And, and how does it work? So I started it without realizing I'd started it, meaning I was trying all these different types of marketing. Like the first type I really tried was the like Facebook ads into a sales funnel, which is how I think a lot of people start. And to be very clear, that can work. I've seen it work time and time again. Yep. It just, for some reason, whatever way I was doing, it was very inconsistent. Like I would one month I'd do extremely well. And then another month I'd have no conversions. And I'm like, I did the same thing last month. Why is this? And it was just so much to manage and figure out, like tweaking the funnel, yeah. the ad copy, the image, like every little thing. What's crazy about marketing that way. And again, it can work. But what I find so fascinating is you truly have to measure every little thing. And people don't realize that. Like if color. Some, like you could have a color, like a red button and a blue button or something. And that could be the actual thing. And I don't actually know if on ads you can do hot spots. I know on websites you can do a hot spot, but on ads, that would actually be if that hasn't been created yet, if you can, that's a good idea. <laughs> so, yeah. But you really don't know why it's working unless you isolate each thing. And there's like a hundred different things to isolate. So regardless, I just found it complicated. And as you know, I'm a simple man. I like things simple. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, what had happened is I had realized that one of our publishing partners had resulted in a million dollars worth of business, a little over a million. Wow. And I started to then look at my CRM. We use pipe drive for our CRM. And I started to notice that there was like a very few amount of people that were resulting into like 70, 80% of our revenue. And then it kind of clicked for me. I was like, 
okay, so many reasons why. Like I was like, one, imagine if you could have an eight figure business and you only have to communicate with like 20 partners, right? So your business is literally all coming from 20 elite partnerships that you built. Now to find those people is not, it's not just like you, you know, call 20 people. Like we're talking, we've done 10,000 plus calls over the years now. Like, but ultimately that's when it started is there was an inconsistency. I realized that there was one partner and then there was a couple other that were doing six figures with us. And then I basically just told the team, I was like, here's our goal. We need to find 20 more of that person. <laughs> you know, like, wow. and, that's it. and then we, we're just on an ever never ending hunt. We do a thousand plus reach outs a day to just find our top partners to grow with. And then there's so many other reasons, like other business things have been created like IPS. It started as me and you referring people to each other in our publishing businesses. Sure. But sometimes you realize there's something else you could build and now we have this whole other business, IPS. So I just think like there's no other way to build a business as good as this. I just don't think there it's is. So true. It's so true. Yeah. It's interesting because I've even heard recently that Facebook has artificial intelligence approving and disproving ads. And so we know of one person that used the word execute in their ad as in like execute business yeah, <laughs> and, they got, and they got banned because people thought it was like killing somebody, <laughs> you know. And uh, I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. And so, yeah, it, it's like if you're putting your whole future of your business on some artificial intelligence approving your ad or not, you're you're setting yourself up to fail. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, with this whole IPS thing, I have a source now for lead generation and it's fantastic because I go to this one partner and this partner pretty much uh, has replaced Facebook. So back in the heyday, I mean, I used to spend $50,000 a month on Facebook ads and, and I mean, that's a, that's a risk. You're putting 50 K out. And you don't know if you'll ever see that back. Mm-hmm. And I've, I've become skeptical of Facebook. I, I've become like, you know, how do I know these are people that are really clicking my ad? I agree, man. I am a yeah. become, dude. Oh, my gosh, man. It's bad. I wear the tinfoil hat too much. <laughs> but, no, I wonder that too, man. Google ads, all of them. I'm like, who's clicking all that? Like, Because it just doesn't. Again, it's just because it's so inconsistent. And I know that other people, I think, have experienced true consistency. Like, you know, like top people, like the Russell Brunsons and stuff. Like, I, it seems like they have. But I just feel like, yeah, there's some months where I'm like, I don't really think these were real clicks. And then there's other months where it'll be like one out of every five people are like an elite potential client. And I'm like, oh, yeah. it didn't change anything. This doesn't make any sense. And so, we've, had, we've had ad campaigns where – Nothing against certain geographies in the world, but we've had like, you know, I'm not going to throw any country under the bus, but we've had countries that typically no one has money. Yeah. You know, and and you're investing all this money in serving people and then you're like, but they can't even afford my product. But Facebook threw them the ad, even though I told them not to throw the ad. And yeah, it creates this whole like... um, you're, I've almost feel like you're building on sand versus yeah. building on a rock. And IPS, you showed it to me back in March. Actually, I'll tell you what, it was 20, it was, it was like December. I met you December 2020. I know I did. And it was two years. It was. And, and you showed me this course. And you had it called something else back then, oh, yeah. but, but I, but I watched it yeah. and I'm like, <laughs> I think I called you like right away. And I'm like, dude, this is unbelievable. Um, yeah. What's been the response? Cause I know like our friend uh, JJ and others have yeah. now tapped into this. It's not just publishing. No, no. So that's what I was going to tell you. So what's been really cool about it is like, and I think me and you talked about this like uh, probably a month ago or so, we were sending messages back and forth. 
But so we have the course, right? And then in some levels, just like uh, my doctor down here, I've gone into business with him and I'm like helping him scale by using the IPS method of partnerships. Um, but JJ, like you said, I think he's speaking at this conference too. Yes. He's yeah. an amazing example where he's really seeing and like going all in on this. And it's like, it, it is kind of like a mind, it really changes the way you think of marketing, I feel like. And, and this is what he's told me is it gets to a point where you actually realize that like you could partner with everyone, right? And that sounds like, and you don't want to go after everyone to start, yeah, but yeah. it does get to a point where, you know, like we literally have reached out to every publisher in the world. I'm convinced. <laughs> like, I don't think there's a publisher. I'm not saying we've talked to everyone, yeah. but like we have attempted to message everyone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So like eventually you do run out of like your top tier, but then you can go to mid tier of like people that could also refer to you, but they're not, you know, direct. So either way, JJ is doing like a hundred plus calls a month. I had dinner with him last night. He had, uh, this was his birthday dinner. He had to leave early to take an IPS call at 9 PM. And I was like, wow. he's like, just wait. It's only like 20 minutes. I was like, no, I'm going to bed. <laughs> Happy birthday. That's good. <laughs> but um, no, his calendar's filled and like the system works. You just gotta you just gotta do the work. I mean, it's very obvious that it works. So absolutely. So you're coming to Igniting Souls Conference. You spoke last year, you did a fantastic job. People loved it. In fact, several people said, you know what, I'm gonna start applying this system. This year you're coming back. JJ's gonna also share. We're gonna be on a panel. But you're going to basically talk. I mean, I love this. It basically says that the world has changed. Are you still trying to reach your people the same way? I mean, how true is that statement right there that like what worked in 2014, 15, 16, 17 is no longer working? What do you think? It's so true. And I, I love the sand analogy that you use there because relationships, it's kind of like what people say, no matter what. So like imagine growing your following on Instagram. The yeah. idea, that's great, but you want to extract those people onto an email list. Now, here's the crazy thing. An email list is better than all your socials, but even an email list, that company like MailChimp, they could like stop your email from going out. Like you're never fully safe, right? Like you're just- That's true. Yeah, it's like, and I, that gets a little, you know, like if you own the list and you're not getting spam complaints, chances are it's not going to happen but i'm just saying even if you own that list but you're using like a mailchimp to send it out you don't technically really own it like because they're the middleman so all i mean is with true relationships you own that and that's where i think it's going to and actually a lot of people have been saying now just because of all the currencies and this is getting into the weeds a little but with the currencies getting inflated deflated and like crypto there's a million currencies now relationships might be some would say the number one currency ooh, right like ooh, that's mic drop boom yeah like that <laughs> and that's how i kind of view it is i'm like how many strong relationships can i build in this world that are meaningful and that it's a like a triple win ideally you know you win they win and then the customers win and it doesn't always have to be business but i just mean like how many and that is a currency. That's better. I think that's better. If you have like a thousand partners and good relationships, I'd rather have that than like a million dollars in the in the bank. I, I would like. But, you know, it's so true. It's like you look at military. Uh, we call these allies. Right. I mean, you look at certain countries when certain countries get attacked. It's like that one country is not just getting attacked. All their people are now standing up. I mean, that's kind of the analogy. Uh, I don't know. I'm not this weird, weird example, but like National Ge Geographic's where some I saw this the other day, some lions getting attacked by these hyenas and, yeah. and like the lion you think is going to be dead. And all of a sudden, like, boom, all the lions come around and protect it. I mean, that's kind of what infinite partnership system is, where it's not you against the world. It's it's your people behind you. What do you think? I couldn't agree more, man. It's just like this unbelievable support system that never stops growing and just becoming better. Like I just can't. And again, I, I feel like I almost everything in entrepreneurship I've like fell into like the book business, wrote a book. People started asking me how I did it. And then I created a company IPS. I was not like happy with how consistent things were. 
tried some other methods, realized something, and then me and you connect and like, boom, whole another. So I just think like, if you want to build something solid and like, if you're thinking long-term, you don't want your business to be dependent on anything else, like on a platform. Wow. You know, nonetheless, like, and you know, whatever. Do you really trust Zuckerberg as much as I love it? <laughs> <laughs> but, but you're right. I mean, uh, you know, you got all these, all these platforms, all this tech. And I mean, even just like, okay, your power goes out, your internet doesn't work, your machine dies. If you're relying on just tech, you're going to, you're going to fall. And that's why I love this, this whole plan. Let's go over some of the steps because I know yeah. that you're going to talk to people at conference. And by the way, folks, like grab your ticket now uh, because tickets are, are definitely filling up here. But let's talk about the seven steps. And I love how you lay this out here because I'm a big visual dude. Let's talk about this here. What's step one and just kind of give us a quick overview. Yeah. And I just, just to give you some props, like you helped a lot with this. Cause like what it was before and actually that phone call when we talked, I think how it went was you were like, yo, this is amazing. Take it down though right now because we <laughs> yeah, yeah. This so people can actually understand it. So that's where like, our geniuses came together really well. Yeah. Like I would never have laid it out this nicely. Just that's, that's all good. That's all good. Um, so regardless, so first thing identify, um, and I'll just use our businesses. It's just sure. the easiest way to do it. So for authors unite, um, and your publishing company yep. for us, our top four types of partners are ghostwriters, editors, publishers, and PR agencies, those four. So you want to identify like who are the top people that have the most of your clientele. So on our end, we do other things, but our core is book marketing. So publishers, there is literally no better partner than a book publisher because they just have a huge pool of authors that they can refer to us to do the marketing. So that's why I said earlier on, we have literally reached out to every publisher that we are able to find on the internet mm. uh, to partner with them. And then same thing with ghostwriters, editors, and PR agencies. I'm convinced we've reached out to all of them. Like, I don't know. <laughs> like, I mean, yeah. there's new ones, right? So that's what number one is, identify. And then I skipped ahead a little, but then contact. So then you, we, we teach in this a specific message to actually send out. And I think this is one of the most valuable things in the course because I'm sure a lot of people can relate to this on – LinkedIn, you get these like huge sales pitch uh, messages. That, oh my gosh. Yeah, it's a nightmare. You never read them. I don't, I wish that people would just stop sending them because they're not being read. Like I, it's a waste of their time as well. Yep. Um, so what this teaches you is actually, and this has been tested time and time again, multiple businesses. JJ is a great example. Yep. Legit, 100 calls a week plus. Um, so it's this initial message that gets them to respond and then you respond back. And then number three is scheduling. Uh, and what that is basically just set up a Calendly or, you know, whatever you want to use. There's different types of uh, scheduling platforms. Yep. Um, but the trick there is you want to embed it into your uh, website. So a lot of people, they have Calendly, but there's no like branding behind it yep. and no potential for retargeting, which is the next step is we teach you to put um, uh, Facebook pixels uh, or a Facebook pixel could be pixels depending on how many sites you have. But um, so that anybody that uh, books a call with you, they are then retargeted with all your success stories. So imagine you reach out to somebody about a potential partnership. They don't know anything about you. They book a call a week uh, from the time they click it. And wow. then by the time they see it, or by the time you have the call with them, they've seen like 20 plus video testimonials. <laughs> So it's just like a, it's a way to get your content in front of them without pushing it on them. Right. Yeah. And that's one of the keys. You don't want to like, you never want to act like you're trying to sell. I feel like it's more just like, like we know, and you know, your product is really good. So I'm just making sure that you're aware of it. So I'm going to retarget you <laughs> like, yeah. rather yeah. than email you 20 links to testimonials. Right. Exactly. So that's what that is. And then we have uh, number five is converse. So we have like a proven script. This has been tested again, tens of thousands of conversations. Um, and all this script is, is like, how do you talk to the person to get them to agree to partnering with you where you both can refer people to each other and have it be 
fruitful uh, for everyone. Yes. Um, and then number six is like when you start this, you'll realize that like you could never just manage it through like email and, and stuff. It's just too much to manage too many people you're talking to. Yep. Um, so there's systems and stuff that we teach. Like one of them is like pipe drive uh, that we use. And then uh, Zapier, if anybody's familiar with that. So we teach you all that in the course on like, how do you set this up? So it's as automated as possible. You still right. want the human touch, but you need automation to scale it. And then um, number seven just teaches you kind of like the evolution that we've come across so far in our businesses of going from really like five to six figures, six to seven, and then seven to eight. And then um, really coming to the conclusion that it's good wherever you're at. If you're a five figure business, this method, uh, there's no risk and it can actually help validate your offers when you're in those early stages yep. without having to spend a bunch of ad money you could just have conversations with partners and be like, Hey, do you think your hundred authors would find this valuable? Hmm. And then you could actually, it can help you create your actual business. So you could be very early or you could be a seven figure business. That's just trying to get to eight. And this uh, scaling part would basically help you to discover how to do that. Um, so good. Yeah, so so good. I mean, we use pipe drive to this day now. Yeah. And I, I can't imagine our company working without, without that, because you're right. You reach this level where you start scaling and you can't just type out a proposal every single time you need automation. So I, I love this. It's so cool that you're now working with a, a doctor. You often use um, a landscaper analogy as yeah. well. And uh, what, is there any business that you think, wouldn't work. Yeah, this gets me pumped up. Okay, so let's talk about it. <laughs> so, like, um, is there any business that it wouldn't work? I I have yet to discover it. If I were to just go to the extreme, it seems to me that like maybe something like Elon Musk, like rocket ship thing, or because there's just there's just like nobody else doing it. But also, I think he is partnering with like governments, so that would negate what I just said. But I just mean like, is there a lot of potential for him to partner people? with people in this method, right. probably not. So, okay, maybe it doesn't work for everyone, but think about it. The landscaper I love and the other one, the doctor is such a great example. Anyone in the health space yep. um, could do this and it would work so beautifully. So he does like IVs, just to give an example, he does like IVs, like blood work and then customize um, customizes like medicines for you based on what your blood panels are. Um, and some other things, but it's, it's kind of like, uh, Dave Asprey, like kind of new age health stuff. Sure, sure. So like uh, one of the best partners that we're targeting is, uh, fitness instructors. So there's a bunch of gyms. South Florida is known to be like, I mean, a lot of partying, but a lot of very health conscious people. Yeah. So we want to reach out to every like fitness instructor that works at all the gyms to build partnerships with them where they'll refer their training clients to us. Wow. Right. And so that'll work. But then it can go as deep as like places that do juicing. You know, they do uh, the juicing yeah. and oh, just, yeah. you know, a client that is going to spend ten dollars on juice. They're obviously health conscious. So maybe that same person would also spend like two hundred dollars on an IV. Right. And it's like once sure. you start to realize that you're like, oh, my God. Like so our idea right now is just partner with every health related business in all of South Florida. Wow. Like, you know, and then you scale it from there. But and then the landscaper, I don't need to go into that, but like it can work for anything. Have you thought about it? Like, can you think of any business it wouldn't work for? I would even say that Elon Musk could work. And here's why. Yeah. The fact that he broke down rocket ships into parts. So, for example, you know, the things I've read about SpaceX is that it's very expensive to have a rocket. So what he did is he broke it down into first principles and, you know, he has like the metal, he has the fuel, he has the electronics. Well, each one of those is technically its own sphere of business, electronics, yeah. metal, fuel. And so I think that he is the guy who assembles it, but he could have these other, uh, I, what, what would you call it? These other um, verticals. Yeah, that, uh, that I think could still work. 
I agree. That makes a bunch of yeah. Like there's actually, I mean, there's businesses that sell metal specifically. Yeah. To say he had like leftover metal, exactly. In a partnership with a metal yeah, or whatever. So that makes yeah. Sense. Yeah, great point. Yeah. So so maybe for the person who's like, ah, oh, this can't work. Take your product. Like for example, you you took books. You kind of did this with with the rockets with with books. Let's say a book is the assembled rocket, and then you took it into marketing editing publishing you know and so you kind of broke that book thing down into pieces and maybe that's kind of the secret with ips is that you take uh the full package and break it down in, in into pieces yeah no i love it i i would love to say there's it would there's no business that won't work for it if anybody ever comes across one let me and carrie know I'm yeah oh yeah well, it's awesome to see you on fire. And, you know, even before we chatted, we mentioned a, a, a client. And it's funny because we won't say this person's name, but like I talked with her this week. You talked with her. Our mutual friend talked to her. And like you said, it's such a small world that everyone's referring her that that's not by accident. I mean, imagine if you could be that recognized that when you're in the industry, it's like, Oh, you got to talk to Tyler. That's what's happening. Yeah. And I think that'll happen. Cause I think you're saw this, but with like blockchain with books and stuff, cause I know you're going yeah, yeah. like, that would be awesome. Like as you progress, cause I know it's still kind of new, but people have to think about it this way. Like what you're using that example. So there's like three or four people that referred this person to me. Yeah. You, like, and she is already a client now. So it's like, do you realize how easy it is to sell something if literally four different people all say like Tyler is the person for this okay. or with blockchain for books, yeah. if it gets to a yeah. point, which I think it will, yeah. that it's like, oh, books, blockchain, carry. And like yeah. five people refer the same. You're not going to lose that deal. There's no, no way. No, no. It is. It, it is super cool. And um, I just feel like, you nailed it. I mean, recession proof, um, Facebook ad proof. That's why IPS to me is, is its own empire. Mm -hmm. I mean, no, no one else has done it this way. And I love how you broke down each step. Um, I love how the curiosity, the retargeting, the you've even said, when you pick up the phone, you're not even having to sell them. They've already sold themselves on all the research of the testimonials that has just popped up in front yeah. of them. Now you're just like collecting payment, essentially. That is really it. I can't tell you how many times I get on a call and they're like, dude, I've seen you every day, like multiple times a day. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, <laughs> they're like, you have good retargeting. That's and, awesome. That's so, so yeah. cool. That's so cool. Well, what would you say to somebody as we close here? What would you say to somebody who says, look, should I even go to this thing? Should I go to this conference? Um, I mean, you're one of like 30 geniuses who's going to be there. Um, I think tickets are like $350. Um, you know, I'm paying 10 times that for like a 48-hour conference coming up. What would yeah. you say to the person who's like, am I going to get value? I know JJ's speaking. What, what, what do you think? I mean, I think it's a no brainer. And I, I mean, just a little bias here, but I think just for the fact that we're presenting about IPS, I think that's worth, I mean, that's worth more than 350, you know what I mean? So yeah, in itself, but like the lineup that you've put together and I always think too, uh, not always, but I think at the point that your business and my business and our business together, the IPS is at, it's kind of like a person if, if a person is looking at this and they want to get to the next level, it's, I just think the, um, there's nothing to really consider. The only thing is like, can you afford it? And can you get there? It, like yeah. there's not, there's so many testimonials we have, like we're talking thousands. So it's like, you know, it, uh, I mean, combining like our books and everything, it's, sure. it's not a question of if it's a good idea. It's just like, does it work with your calendar? <laughs> it's like, oh, it's exactly. Like, yeah. Exactly. Well, listen, man, great job. And your by the way, your first book was called um was it was it Crush Crush Conferences? What was it called? Conference Crushing. Conference Crushing. Yeah. And uh and what inspired that uh as well? 
that was um, after I dropped out of school, I started going to my way of learning was reading books and going to uh, conferences. Uh, so that uh, book is like a little guide, just how I realized from going to all these conferences, like how to maximize your ROI of going to them. So good. Yeah. So you kind of like take these complex topics and you're, you're uh, in the words of Dan Sullivan, you're, you're a simplifier. Mm-hmm. And, and, and then I tend to be a multiplier. And so us together is fun. <laughs> no, it's perfect. Cause yeah. I know, and I think that's, it is because I, I even oversimplify. Like I've had people like, you know, like my contracts are like five sentences. Yeah, yeah. These are like big deals. So sometimes like people like yeah. come back to me and they're like, yo, I appreciate, like I know exactly what I'm going to get, but like my lawyer won't like allow me to sign this because it's like only five sentences. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> we like, there's like a need to complicate it. <laughs> I'm like, yes. but having you and me together, it really That's does hard. help because sometimes people need more info rather than, Hey, just this is what it is. So. Yeah. Well, and you've helped me too. I mean, you've you've totally helped me and my team. So I I'm so glad that you're you're speaking. I'm so glad JJ's coming to speak. So uh, thanks for all you're doing, Tyler. And and yeah, man, I got some more clients here. You know, to sell you, uh, push push your way, and you know, vice versa. So excited, man. For sure, man. Me too. And thanks for having me on. I'm excited uh, for the conference. All right. Take care. We'll see you. Thank you.